studio. The second round robin started with a bang and it will continue today as the race for playoffs is on and some of the top dogs are clashing at the end of the day. But first, we'll see if Astralis can take that crucial win in the race for playoffs as they face off against Team BDS. My name is Shox and I'm joined once again by the Goldborg Jamada duo. Aww. You guys look so great, I gotta thank say. You, thank you. And both in that pose and as well, uh, you know, the matching outfits. I mean, we're all kind of... Yeah, yeah. I believe, but that's stuff. you're borrowing his shirt, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I've, I've, yeah. I've, I've ransacked his, his it's wardrobe. So it's wardrobe. When your friend borrows your clothes and he just looks better in all of it. <laughs> yeah, he's been getting so many compliments in Goldberg's. Just <laughs> like, ugh, that is my shirt, actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, uh, let's take a look at the standings because it's still a very dead even battle for the last playoff spot. But one team, they just stand above the rest. The regular season kings, Rogue, Jamada, and now eight w game winning streak after beating Fnatic. They are on a roll. I will say it was a close game yeah. yesterday. To be fair. But yeah, on a roll, regular season stuff. We expect this from Rogue. Maybe the game was a little bit closer than they would have liked in for Yeah, but I also think it brings out a new clutch factor from Rogue, right? We're so used to the fact that it needs to be by the book. It's a proper draft and it's just clean and calm and collected. Yesterday's game was nothing like that. And you know, Malrung having that hex flash over for the Baron, I mean, that pretty much sealed the deal for that That's game. That's a tilter if that happens, I, I mean, think. that just makes or breaks it. And it's literally a poppy queue. No smite needed. That, what a moment to witness. It's a sub 100 damage spell when it comes to like <laughs> hitting Baron. Yeah, it was absolutely absurd. So many team fights just back and forth. I really have to give a lot of credit to, of course, we spoke about Marang already. Larson on the Azir really, really popped off multiple times. I think uh, as well, you mentioned Gorborg earlier on comps positioning as well. It was really superb in a lot of fights. I think it's just like, you, you know, Ro came in with a composition that had to outrange the opponent. They only really had the Poppy <laughs> to mitigate the uh, pressure that Fnatic was going to apply to them. And they played around the range really beautifully. I think they showed why this composition is difficult to put, to actually pull off, but also why they were able to do that themselves. Yeah, skillful composition, and that made it also maybe in part a very difficult game. Jamada, you and I talked to Trimby in PGL as well, and he was saying, yeah, we're, we're trying to teach ourselves to be better in these clutches, um, in going for it, even if it's not 100% play, rather than doing it and failing than not doing it at all. Yeah, and super important, always on the same page, just sending the play, making sure that you do it as soon as possible, because hesitation will look on many occasions end up losing you many fights and skirmishes that would have been your way if you just did it in the first place. Yes, so good that Rogue is practicing that going into those playoffs if they lock, but I think it I mean, looks pretty likely that yeah. they will lock. Um, someone who is not locked yet is G2. They did finally break their four game losing streak up versus Astralis, GB, but... You know, if you say that that other game was close, like, <laughs> this was... Uh... They did it, but it was not in a fashion that, you know, they had hoped up for. They set out to set themselves ahead in the early game, put themselves in a stable position in the mid game. That was not what happened. This game almost comes so close for Astralis to come back into the game. And had it not been for BD, BB's call at this position to end the game with a base race like this, or just a backdoor rather, yeah. I, they could have been dire for them. Yeah, let's be honest. You're a G2 fan. You see this game. You're not feeling confident, to be honest. Probably, Are you, right? though? I mean, you just uh, wanted to win. I mean, sure, you wanted to win, but it's Astralis. The Astralis that have not made playoffs once ever. Sure, they're looking the best they've ever looked. Yeah. Let's not mince words for Astralis and their split so far. But to have it come this close to the point where you have to base race during a Baron quarter, take a win. I think it's exactly how they want to win, right? They want to get the, the, they they wanna get the blood fashion. flowing, the blood pumping for sure. Now, SK, they are on a high. They now have three wins in a row. Yesterday, they were up against BDS, of course, last place. They're not doing too hot, but those can be tricky games, right? And in the past, they have fallen to those opponents, Goldberg, but they have shown us yet another look to SK. That's what I mean, right? And that specifically, because they didn't do it in the same fashion they did with the 2 -0 week. The only thing that was reminiscent of that was the fact that Gilius was back on a playmaker on the Javan. The rest of the lanes was fairly scaling. And for that, SK, they couldn't be as proactive as they was in the past, but they still made it work. Yeah, I, I think I said this yesterday. If you swapped the nameplates around, or you turned off the nameplates, you would expect the drafts to have been swapped. You would have mm -hmm. expected SK on the red side. Uh, and you would have just not really seen this kind of scaling aspect you would have uh, you saw yesterday in previous weeks. So it was definitely a very nice change of pace and the fact that they were able to execute on it pretty damn cleanly they, was a, definitely a very nice surprise. Yeah, they may even make playoffs. I believe there was a little bet that uh, went off so in the that Discord. Went, uh, <laughs> on in Discord yesterday, Nymera and Dai have made a bet. Uh, uh, he thinks SK is going to make playoffs and going to make worlds. And if they do, I'll have to dress up as a Star Guardian and apologize. If he doesn't get it, he's dressing up as Star Guardian Ari then. So. Okay, I'll see. It's a win-win for him. I feel him. like you both really want to dress up as Star yeah. Guardian. No, for him, he gets Ari. <laughs> I'm um, confident. I, I hear also that maybe someone today will be dressed up in Star Guardian something, but mm, we'll see. But for summer, uh, the oh. LEC Finals <laughs> is heading to... Malmö. In Sweden, and you can already get your tickets at lec.gg slash... Malmö. 
Thank you, treats. But you can also join the expo <laughs> beforehand. Now, we did this last in Athens. It's basically, um, yeah, activities for you to do before you head over to the show. There's player boots. There's all kinds of activities, uh, a lot of fun. You can meet the players. We'll be walking around there. This is how we did it in Athens. But what's very important is that you need to register. Even if you already have a ticket for the day, you need to head over um, to one second, I have the link for you in a minute, lec.gg slash expo, because uh, otherwise, you know, we don't know how many people are coming and you know, know the whole deal, but uh, it's really, you guys weren't there, I think, in, in Athens no. last no. time. Too, no, too, too, too much of a Zoomer, unfortunately. Too much yeah. of a Zoomer, yeah. unfortunately. It was a lot of fun. Misfits even had, I believe, like a quiet disco booth and everything, so we were jamming out. It is a lot of fun, and I hope to see you all there. Now, as we love our fans, we're going to keep our fans in the spotlight for an edition of Family Feud. On Discord, we will ask fans questions. And then it's up to us at the desk to guess which answer the Discord will vote for, basically. Um, I have never played this game, but I have been briefed. But you know what? We'll just go with the flow. Let's take a look at the very first question for the fans, which is... Um, I think it'll be behind us, actually, probably. Mm, or is it the lower third? first one is in prompter. Who knows? Oh, it's in the prompter. Uh, which one of these champions would you like to okay. remove okay. from the game? Shaco, uh, Yumi, Timo, Yasuo. After, well, for, for sure, Yumi, no. After the second champion, you didn't have to read anymore. No. That, it's, it's Yumi 100%. I think I, I would actually wager that Yasuo is probably the second. Because Yumi is such an obvious answer. So, so, the thing so is, this, it's three out of four, right? This Production, is a Discord. Or? Or is it one out of those four? Oh, one. But it's oh, gotta one. be oh, you. Then it's you. Yeah, like, yeah. It's and not even close. I think it's really important. The fact is, we're not discussing this. It's Discord who's like, yes. we have to find out what Discord's well, actually doing is, here. How would and, it not be Yumi? Well, first of all, they said Fnatic was the best bot lane yesterday. Uh, so yeah, that, that also true. takes yeah. in some different, uh, you know, some different logic here. But in the end, I probably would have to agree with both of you. I mean, what would be? I mean, Yasuo is kind of a tilter because, like, you know, when you have a Yasuo on your team, they always feed, and when there's on the enemy team, they're always. I respect. I respect you selling it, but do you remember the nerf buff remove segment with the pro players? Yeah. I, how many of them said Yumi? Because I think it's gonna <laughs> echo here. Uh, yeah, I think we're gonna go for Yumi. I think Discord is gonna have picked Yumi. I don't know if we're supposed to get here or what's going on. Aha! Which champion would you like to remove from the game? Well. There we have it. Fanatic, boots, scuttle, options are here. <laughs> what is oh. <laughs> what is what is happening? The answer well, is Yumi. The, the answer, answer may surprise Yumi. you. It <laughs> <laughs> sleeps like I'm having like a stroke or something. Fanatic boots scuttle. <laughs> Okay, it was Yumi at Discord. Thank you for voting. We're going to go on to the second one. I hope that animates correctly. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Who will win oh. LEC Summer? G2, Fnatic, Mad Lions, or someone else? Like, Rogue doesn't even get it. Here's where that Discord okay. thing comes in from yesterday. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there is a different amount of a fan base in there, so I don't necessarily this may be the, the it, it's going to be the right answer. I think it's going to be with the answer that they want, and that's either Fnatic or G2. I think they have some common sense. Okay. And I think they may go for someone else. Wow. I wish You're I could generous. agree. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, usually it's always Fnatic or G2, like yeah. in our poll, so. Oh, I saw most Fnatic. I'm going to go with Fnatic. I'm going to say they said Fnatic. Uh, I don't know if it's bad. Not that I like believe us. it, but I think they said yeah. it. I, all right, just to be contrarian, I'm going to say G2. I feel like they would either have sense, though, and say Mad or Rogue. But I'm I'm gonna lock in G2. I think is here it the comes. Most Who will win LEC Summer according to Discord? We'll see. Maybe they just surprise us and they're like Rogue. Uh... Oh, they actually did say someone else. Someone good, else. Good job, Discord. Damn. Wow. Okay. Yeah, good, I'm good. sorry. But well, clearly that's BDS. <laughs> 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 we just fill in ourselves. Nice job, Discord. Wow. Not being biased. Something we can never do. Um, we have one final. Oh, Marcoon Comp Niski. Oh God. Oh God. Oh, no. <laughs> We're, oh, no. not uh, uh, We're not looking at that. We're not looking at that. Next question. Finally, is. <laughs> It's the first time we do this segment, guys. What is the most OP role in the game? Support, uh, jungle, mid, or ADC? I like they left out top because no one was no, ever no going to say that. Say top. <laughs> um, I mean, do, do you, you want to say it or should I? Because I think we know what the answer is. It's jungle. It's jungle. It's jungle. Yeah, I, I'm a jungle player. I know it's jungle. It, uh, it's not anything else. You probably, you clearly haven't played with any good support. Well, I have. I'm the True. support main. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so, uh, you're saying that <laughs> Discord's going for jungle? 
I, I think that's fair. I think they've Yeah, well, because well, like AD carries are, are always like whining about their I'm, I'm power level. Say, mid maybe? I I'm going to say no. it's going to go jungle support mid AD. Okay. I that's think that's what probably the solid, the solid. Uh... Let's see. Yeah. I, I hope it doesn't break this time. We'll see. Support 15, jungle uh, 68, <laughs> mid 15, and ADC 2%. Yeah. There's, two, there's two votes for ADC. <laughs> told, like... you, told you the ADCs were whining again. <laughs> They're out again. Uh, well, that that was very smooth, Discord. <laughs> Thank you for playing. We're definitely going to do that again. Um, on to more games, though, but not really. It's quite serious because Jamada and Goldberg, you've actually picked out some mid-season MVP candidates. So, who are they? Well, we, uh, we've gotten over three potential mid-season MVP candidates to talk <coughs> over today. Uh, obviously, nothing is official here. It's all hypothetical. But... For the first one, we are going to start out in that infamous AD carry position, as just discussed. Not very OP. <laughs> Comp, on the other hand, in both TV2 scenarios and in team fights, makes it seem quite broken. It makes it look like it's the best role in the game very frequently. And I think not only is it because of how strong of an AD carry uh, player Comp is, but also he bounces really well off of Trimby. They are, for me, our best duo in Europe at the moment. But not only that, it feels like Rogue do a great job at facilitating them out of their lane into the mid game and actually using the strength of the champions to try and slingshot themselves even further ahead. And I think that's one side of the coin, but there's also the other side where sometimes, you know, we've seen the Senna Seraphine. We've seen the bot lane as be the facilitators of the rest of the map as well. And I think having a bot lane that can do both that's really important, especially when a meta that always just shifts around different picks and all of that. Yeah, such a volatile male. I, I think when you have that kind of flexibility in a bottom lane, it's super important. And moving into, you know, the mid lane, I think when you talk about flexibility, Niski is maybe someone that you would expect to be flexible. But for Matt Lyons, he's been playing effectively one style, and that is push mid, roam, and is making Mad look excellent. And to me, I feel right now he is facilitating Oyoya so well, and it's just giving Mad these massive leads. I think it's the fact that Niski's not a star player, but he's yeah. making everyone else around him a star. He's such a selfless mid laner. He loves to be on the Lissandra. We saw him on the Talia yesterday as well. And I think just the way he's planning goes with Elioi. You kind of touched on it a little bit yesterday's Telestrator too. They're just so good at finding plays from the early game, the early tracking, and then just make a game plan on the fly. Super impressive stuff from Niski. But we also had an honorable mention uh, for a specific jungler who had a very, very good start to the split. Lay out the groundwork for Makun here. Yeah, so for Makun, kind of in a similar vein to Mad Lions for me, I feel is doing such an excellent job at securing his own individual leads. But I feel like the difference between, for example, XL and Mad Lion is Niski is consistently facilitating El Yoya, whereas Markuna is kind of getting a lot of his own leads and then pushing that into lanes. And when you then occasionally see Nuke Duck bounce off of Markun in the 2v2 and then move that to a silent as well, XL look even more threatening. Yeah, and I also think just in general, I mean, if they did not have this little slump just last week, Makuna, yeah. if he continued up this trend, I mean, I would have just straight up slammed yeah, him he would, at the yeah, mid-season MVP. Such a huge, impressive performance going from spring into summer instead. But speaking of Makuna, he is looking to lead XL to the playoffs for the second time in the Orcs history as well. And tonight, they can make a huge step as they take on Fnatic in our LG Ultra Gear match of the week. Excel is such a quandary because the organization and the management behind the team have shown such clear commitment to development and training processes. It has taken 1,142 days, and on the seventh time of trying, Excel will make playoffs. It took seven seasons for them to make it to playoffs. And I think for Excel, they've always had the drive. They've always had the motivation. And I think for the first time in maybe the organization's history, they have the players to live up to those expectations. If you stop improving, you're not going to be a top team anymore by the time playoffs comes, especially by the end of playoffs. For me personally, I haven't even considered myself like a top team until we actually beat teams in playoffs. So the drive is still there. Oh, much he needs the needle work and the target! Finn Finito done so! Excel kill three and they're not done yet. That's for the ace for Excel. When I think of Fnatic, they already are presumed to be at the top. Rogue consistently winning the regular season. Mad Lions adding trophies to the cabinet, along with only three other teams from Europe. And now all of these organizations are being challenged 
by teams like Excel. So I think Excel versus Fnatic is incredibly important when you look ahead. And when you start to think, does Fnatic continue to garner the respect, the fear, the expectations of being a finalist? To be honest, I didn't expect Excel to do that good, but Botlane is quite good. Probably one of the better bot laners in Europe right now. So from my point of view, it's uh, there for sure threat, but we're also a good team and I don't see why would we not win against them. When it comes to Upside and Healy, I think it's mostly their names carrying them. They're not actually the best, especially right now. I think uh, me and Mickey, we can match them. The confidence from the Fnatic players is what drives them and pushes them to do amazing things. But in my opinion, it also could be a factor in why some of the more basic elements of competitive play are overlooked or disregarded. I don't think they seem like a team to me. I think they're very individually focused. So if you win individually, you're gonna insta win the game. And second of all, even if they are individually better than you, you can still win by team play because I feel like they seem to be lacking that look. Upset down, in with the barrel, takes Elisang's head and only their second ever victory versus Fnatic. I don't think Fnatic underestimated XL, but I think they were surprised by how good XL performed. I mean, we all were. XL at the beginning of summer blew everybody's minds. What I can say, Fnatic will want revenge. Those players will want to prove that that was a fluke and that they, they can do the same to XL. Well, yes, the Fnatic does want to prove it was a fluke. Otherwise, they'll be doing their best G2 cosplay because they're currently on a three-game loss streak. Could be four if they don't manage to win the match of the week versus XL. And I really like the, the fire coming out of some of the XL players there in that video. Um, and I'd love to toss it to my panel, Yamada, in terms of saying they don't look like a team. They go off individual prowess and still then if they pop off, you can beat them because you're playing as a team. I don't even disagree with that point at all from Alcoon, to be honest with you. I think we've seen it quite a few times. I think one of the biggest examples is probably the Caitlyn lane from last week, where mm. I feel like Upset and Hilly were sure getting their own individual leads, but across the map, they just weren't really playing with it. That's the thing, right? So you don't see bot lane take a lead, move that lead to the rest of the map. It's very like, okay, bot lane, let's get ahead. If we get into the mid to late game and we just start team fighting around objectives, that's great. But it's not like they're looking to facilitate the rest of the map, which it did look like for one week, and then we just didn't see it again. Mm -hmm. um, and that line about, it's just their names, Upset and Healy, but on the Rift, we can't really see it. And I think that's always a case with Fnatic as the brand, as the organization, because of all the successes of the past. But it seems to me that they're not exactly there right now. No, I definitely agree with it. And even in the clip, you know, Healy saying that XL's bot lane are quite good right now. I'd say the same if I was solo killed by them down there in the 2v2. We just saw it in the clip mm -hmm. as well. Patrick and Mickey, they are on a tear. They are on a roll, not only just in the 2v2, but also just in the map state instead. Yes, they had a little bit of a slump, but so does Fnatic. And I think for either of these two teams, it's great to have this as a stepping stone. XL already have the head-to-head. -head. When you're racing off against Fnatic for playoffs, getting that 2-0 against them, that's so monumental. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah though, having the 2-0 uh, head-to-head -head would be absolutely insane. But also, you think about it like this, going into next week, uh, there's, what, seven games left or mm -hmm. so, and Fnatic would still be at five wins. That means on... You know, average, you'll need about nine to get into playoffs. You have to win four out of those seven games. And right now, given how Fnatic are playing, I wouldn't even have them down necessarily yeah. to do that. You can't drop the ball anymore. It's a real benchmark, a barometer for, I think, the rest of the season between Fnatic and XL. But we've got some other bangers to close out the day as well. G2 and Rogue are going to face off right before our match of the week. Our match of the week will, of course, be at the end of the day. Now, uh, these games will be played on stage, but a small reminder that games one and three will not have players in the studio due to positive COVID cases for Team BDS and Vitality. We do wish the players, of course, a swift recovery. As always, hope to see them again soon. And you might think, but I saw Astralis coming to the studio. They are uh, they are healthy. They are playing from the studio because then we can do interviews with them like we're going to interview uh, Kabi in a little bit. So that's why they are here. So let's talk about the first match of the day, Astralis versus BDS. For BDS, it's starting to become really difficult to talk about. And I think you also see that when you look at the player's Twitter, um, yeah. grabs his Twitter in terms of first, like a little hopeful, trying to get a positive approach here and there, but nothing is working. I think for BDS, which is a tree team I quite tracked in the beginning as well, I thought they were better coming into summer. They were really good at golden, getting gold leads in the early game. They just did not understand how to close out the game. Now moving forward, 
I feel like they didn't develop as a team. I actually feel like they regressed. Now they're not even able to get these gold leads we saw them get. I don't think the drafting facilitates it either. This is a team that just needs to get one thing going for them at this point to try and make it back because nothing has just been working for them. Yeah, and I feel even, you know, you say they've regressed, right? They've taken one step back. Even if they take one step forward, then they make it to the point where they're getting early game leads. If they're not able to push it against a team like Astralis, who have very consistently been drafting late game team fighting compositions, that is their core strength. How do you expect to close out against Astralis? Because realistically, it's just going to come to a point 25, 30 minutes into the game where they're just going to out team fight you alone off composition. Mm -hmm. So hopefully they can find the strength to get something going in the early game for BDS. But when it comes to Astralis, I think for me has been one of the biggest positive surprises so far of summer. Now the question is, how much more do they have left in the tank in terms of really being able to lock that playoff spot? I actually think that some of Astralis' draft has been incredibly good. Even going into the draft against XL, where they had the action to get Lista, or we saw the draft against Vitality, which unfortunately they lost that game. If they sometimes had better hands, I think they would win out some of these games. But I really think that the drafting lacks off of some of the things that, you know, they can't always develop as players into the game. Uh, and then just in general, showing up with Jonghoon with Kavi down that bot lane, that's been excellent. It's been excellent indeed. And speaking of, we're going to get more insight on Astralis as Machine was joined by Kavi earlier. All right, we're rocking and rolling. Thank you very much, Efia. And we're here with Kobe, of course, of Astralis, AD Carry, who's been to the tippy top, and I'm here to get into the nitty gritty a little bit, if you're up for it, Kobe. Um, you know, you've, you've got a proven capacity for greatness, and I, I think it's perfect time, you know, deep into the season to try and investigate, you know, where you are setting your goals. I imagine it's not easy to kind of keep not only realistic goals, but high aspiring goals and find the right balance. Do you actively set goals and, and have you met them or are you, have you got on track to? I do actively set goals. I've done that my whole life or career. Um, but I've learned along the way that, I mean, it's good to have high goals, but sometimes you've got to be more realistic as well. Like, I obviously had the goal like everyone else to win Worlds and all of this, but my main goal is like, still to win LEC because that has been realistic the whole time, I think, even though I haven't, haven't done it. Um, but yeah, it's definitely hard when you constantly get knocked down year after year. And mm -hmm. if you feel like you're getting older, it's drifting further and further away. But I do believe the best you can do is set high goals and keep working for it. Have you heard um, uh, this popped up on my TikToks the other day? It was an Olympian talking about the rule of thirds, suggesting that when you're chasing a dream or chasing a goal, you have one third of the time you're at the highs, you're, on the, you're at the high highs, a third of the time you're feeling crappy, and a third of the time you're in the middle. And if you're, off, if you're off in some way, you know, if you're too feeling too high all the time, you're probably not having to set high enough goals. And if you're, it's an interesting way to think about it. Do you think you're, you're adhering to the rule of thirds in your career right now? It makes sense when I hear it, but I think for me, it's not really the case. No. Um, I think I've spent most of my time like on the low end or like disappointment, I feel like, um, or in the middle somewhat, like a lot of time is in the middle. Mm. And to me, that just, doesn't really do anything for me. Um, yeah. No, I was just thinking because it's a, it's a team game as well. Like, you know, you have all your individual goals, but you also have four other people around you that need to have uh, similar ones to achieve similar things. I would like to talk a bit about your bot lane. Jong Hoon is an interesting prospect. You know, the idea of a Korean rookie sent to Europe and doing well. You know, he turned, uh, turned heads in Korea. He's popping heads here in Europe. How has it been, though, with the idea of a language barrier? It's something I'm interested in. A lot of people talk about language being its own, uh, or league being its own language, and there's differences there in terms of how you communicate, how you kind of understand each other. How are you finding it? I mean, how is his English? His English is improving uh, day by day, week by week. When he first got here, it was not very good. Sure. Um, so, yeah, but... I think he's a good player and I see myself as a good player too and we can kind of understand each other in game and what we want to do and there's obviously the league terms like uh, Drake, Baron, Push, Recall, like all these, sure. he knows these words, right? Um, is it non-verbal as well? Like is it kind of, you know, he knows what, what you want, you know, when you get to, when you play enough, he kind of sees how you're moving, sees what you want to do, what your next move might be. Yeah, exactly. That's coming slowly. Um, yeah, okay. So I feel like we have a good understanding and um, not all the time I feel like uh, the communication is needed. Um, so actually, right now, the problem for our team is like not communicating with him. Um, it's more like communication in the team as a whole is right. not so great right now. But that has uh, nothing to do with uh, him. No, not uh, at all. Yeah. A team game. Uh, uh, dude, thank you so much for your time. Really insightful answers. I wish we had more time. I've got like three more questions on this thing, but amazing answers. Uh, oh, cut that whole thing. Knuckles. And we're going to throw it over to Goldborg back in the studio.
Kasper Koppe Kopperup. A stable name for us LEC fans. But of course, it wasn't always like that. Travel back in time with me. The year is 2016. Kobe is on a team which would become synonymous with his name. Starting out in the EOLCS with no success story for Kobe. In his first split, he finished eighth and he was forced to play relegations, barely holding up to that spot, beating Giants 3-2. For summer, changes had to happen and rookie support, Mickey X, was brought in as Kobe's new duo. Remember, our past failures forges our future. In his rookie year, Koppen makes it to world after an incredible bounce back for summer. But success is often fleeting. In their group, they get destroyed, finishing one and five, and their world run is over. Over the years to come, Koppen becomes one of the most consistent ADCs in the league. But even Mr. Consistent have his struggles. 2017 spring and summer, third place. 2018 spring, third. 2018 regional finals to qualify for Worlds again, third. Until finally, in the summer of 2019, from the failures of his past, he forges his future, earning the title of All-Pro ADC of the summer of 2019, finishing second at the regional finals and finding his way back to the international stage, to the world championship. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now at the peak of Kobe's career. And unlike his last appearance at Worlds, they're absolutely smashing their group. They're making a name for themselves with incredible individual performance and great team effort. They're able to tie FPX, that won that world championship in the group standings and make it to quarters. They fall in the quarterfinals to SKT. But for Kobe, this just seems to be the beginning of his career, looking to solidify himself at the next top EU ADC. Unfortunately, that's a world we'll never know, because Kobe, he transfers to Team Solo Mid. And after a mediocre split, he's back in Europe playing for Misfits and now could no longer even make it to the once regrettable third place. And then last split, he then transfers to Astralis in a roster move I genuinely thought would put him into retirement after finishing 10th. But you know what they say, our past failures, fortunes our future. And that brings us to the present, where this summer, honestly, he's making me eat my own words. And while he's not back to peak performance, he is showing signs of life again. Paired now with Junghoon, this summer, he's shown a newfound aggression. In lane, looking to take charge like we once saw it, and have impact in the mid game. He's doing his best to dictate the pace of the fight on threatening to AD carries like the Twitch and the once infamous Sire. Copy is rewriting his failure from spring for a better future in summer. And we'll see today if they can pick up a monumental win versus Team BDS in the race for players and maybe even Worlds for Kobe again. Now let's throw to a caster duo, the only two brothers I've only seen on a caster desk together. Initialize and Nightmare, take it away for a first game. 